you, Standard 6. Welcome to our lesson today where we are still looking at uh, the topic food and nutrition. And today we are still looking at methods of preserving food. Remember in the previous lesson uh, we mentioned the traditional and the modern methods of preserving food and today we just want to look at each method and how it preserves food. We are not going to differentiate the modern and the traditional today because we already did it. Now we are just going to look at the methods and how they preserve food. Beginning with drying. How does drying preserve food? Drying is whereby you harvest your maize, you air it on the sun, and it is dried by the sun. What does the sun do on the food? It removes the moisture, water in the, in the, in the maize. The sun removes moisture, leaving the grains dry so that they can stay for long without going back. Drying is also the cheapest method because you are not paying for the sun. It's just there, ready for you. You choose when to use it. It is very cheap. Then examples of foods preserved by drying. They include, number one, we have cereals. I've mentioned maize, sorghum, millet, barley. You can name them. We also have wheat and rice. We have tubers like cassavas. Then we have meat. Meat was preserved long time ago by, pre by drying. We have fish. I know some of you have seen dry, dry fish being sold out there on the market. And we also have legumes, beans, uh, soya beans, green grams, and so forth. Look at smoking. How does smoking preserve food? Smoking preserves food in which manner? The smoke or food is exposed to the smoke which is from fire then the food is coated. So smoking coats food. And when it coats food, it keeps off bacteria and fungi. Bacteria and fungi are disease-causing organisms, or, or they are so-called germs. Then it also removes moisture. Smoking also removes moisture from food, leaving the food dry. Removal of moisture is also called dehydration. So you can see smoking and drying, they perform dehydration on food. Examples of food preserved by smoking, we have beef, mutton, pork, and fish, specifically meat. Then use of honey. How does honey preserve food? Now, in this manner, food is dipped into honey, and this was done long time ago. It's a traditional method. Food was dipped into honey, and the honey keeps off the germs. It keeps off the microorganisms uh, that cause uh, the food to go bad. Then examples of food that were preserved by honey were mostly fruits. They were mostly fruits, e.g. bananas and pineapples. So honey was mostly used on fruits. Use of ash. Ash, ash we know very well that ash is a pesticide. So how does it preserve food? It keeps off the pests. It keeps off anything that comes to destroy that food. So ash is used mostly to preserve tuber crops which are affected by pests, so it keeps off the pests. Use of low temperatures. This one is both a traditional method and a modern method. Same to drying. Drying was used in traditional uh, times and it is used today. Low temperatures were used long time ago and they are also used today. Now, use of low temperatures, long time ago, uh, low temperatures, first of all, they prevent bacteria and fungi from multiplying. When bacteria gets into low temperatures, they become inactive. They cannot multiply. They cannot increase. So they end up not causing any harm to that food because they are inactive and they cannot multiply. They cannot increase. A charcoal cooler was used long time ago to preserve food mostly like uh, milk. And a charcoal cooler is whereby Milk was put in a bottle, put in a, a, a basin of water, then covered with a piece of cloth. So the piece of cloth, what it does, it absorbs water from the basin, then that water moves uh, or uh, rises by the process of capillarity up to the top. Then what is happening here is that water, as it rises in the piece of cloth, it evaporates. And that evaporation is the principle under which a charcoal cooler worked. A charcoal cooler used to work under the principle of evaporation. And it was used as a form of low temperatures. 
And today, what do we use as a form of low temperatures? In your houses, you have refrigerators, you have freezers. Now, today we use low, uh, in low temperatures, we use refrigerators in our houses, and we have cold rooms which are used in schools, in hospitals, and uh, other institutions. They use cold rooms. So refrigerator, refrigerators and cold rooms are used where there is electricity. Canning. Canning is done in factories. And in this case, food is preserved in bottles or cans. Food is preserved in bottles or cans. Like yogurt, juice, soda, they are canned. And uh, when you are buying this food from the supermarket or from the shop, ensure that you check the expiry date. That is most important because if you don't check the expiry date, you might end up taking something that is, has already gone bad and you'll cause food, poison, food poisoning to yourself. You'll cause infections to yourself. So check the expiry date on canned food. Then food preserved uh, using canning is like fish, meat, beans, sweets, fruits, and juice. This is mostly used by the military. Then the last one is freezing. Freezing, we use a freezer. This is a machine that needs electricity to, to work. And in, when we put food in deep freezers, it is able to last for long. Thank you so much. This has been our lesson. Yours, Chabela.